Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking that Hackintosh that I built recently out of an Optiplex 9020 and putting it against a real Mac to see how a Hackintosh compares to a 2014 Mac Mini. So here we go. So the way I structured this video is I broke it up into a few different parts and I'll have an index down in the description so you can jump right to any of those areas that you're interested in. But we're going to talk a little bit about specs, general use, of course, these are not gaming machines, but I got to talk about gaming video editing, and then I'll give my final thoughts on the whole thing at the end. So let's jump right into it. So first the specs. The Hackintosh is built from a Dell Optiplex 9020. It's got a 3.3 gigahertz 4590 processor that's a quad core processor. It has 16 gigs of DDR3, 1600 RAM, a 500 gigabyte SSD drive, and the Intel HD 4600 integrated graphics. The Mac Mini is a 2014 Mac Mini. It's got a 2.6 gigahertz i5 4278U. That's a two core mobile processor in this desktop machine. It's got 16 gigabytes of DDR3 1600 RAM, a 256 gigabyte uh, SSD drive, and the Iris Pro 5100 integrated graphics. So the first comparison I wanted to do on these machines is the synthetic benchmarking. And for that I use Geekbench, Cinebench, and Unigen Heaven. So in Geekbench, these two machines actually scored pretty close on the single core processing. The Hackintosh got a single core score of 3813, and the Mac Mini got a single core score of 3565. So there's a little difference there, but it's not huge, not really even all that noticeable. Where the big change is, is in the multi-core score. The Hackintosh got a multi-core score of 1670 while the Mac Mini only got a score of 69.69. So that multi-core score is a huge difference. The processor in the Hackintosh is much more powerful. So moving on to Cinebench, the Hackintosh got an OpenGL score of 17.44 frames per second, while it got a CPU score of 498. And the 2014 Mac Mini got an OpenGL score of 25.12 frames per second and a CPU score of 273. So in this correlation, we can definitely see the differences between the more powerful processor in the Hackintosh and the more powerful integrated GPU in the Mac Mini. So the next thing I did was Unigen Heaven, and these neither of these two machines are ideal for gaming or 3D work or anything like that because of those integrated GPUs, but I just wanted to do a test to see if we could see what the difference is between those two. So the Hackintosh got an average of 11.8 frames per second with a minimum of 7.7 .7 and a max of 17.9. So that's very poor performance to be expected with that integrated GPU. So the 2014 Mac Mini did a little bit better with an average score of 19.3, a minimum of 9.4 and a max of 30.3. Again, you could clearly see the difference in the power of the integrated GPU in the 2014 Mac Mini, but it's still not powerful enough for 3D kind of work. So for general use, just browsing the web, navigating through your computer, doing some office work, both of these machines worked extremely well. Things open fast because of those SSDs. The 16 gigabytes of RAM allows for multiple windows, multiple tabs on your browser, multiple virtual desktops, all that stuff works just great on these machines. And there's really no difference between the two in this area. So for just general use, they both perform really well. All right, next up is gaming. And honestly, I debated whether to put this in the video or not, because like I said, neither of these two machines are designed for gaming, but I get asked about it in every video, no matter what machine I review. So I got to put it in here. The, the gaming on these two machines, it doesn't matter which one you're on, any 3D thing, uh, recent AAA titles, anything like that are not gonna run well on this machine. Before you ask, no, Fortnite does not run well. You can get it to run, but it is not a great experience. So for anything like that, don't even bother with these machines. Now, where it does do really well is things like RimWorld or Oxygen Not Included. Any of those less graphically intensive games, any of the older games work just fine but anything more recent are not gonna be good on these. These are not gonna be good for things like uh, Blender or any 3D design work either. Those in integrated GPUs are just not powerful enough. Next up is video editing, and I just wanna say right off the bat that if you're an Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve user, these machines are not gonna be good for you. I tried both of those applications on these machines, did not have good performance, playback was really slow, scrubbing slow, it just, 
was pretty much unusable. So where these two machines do excel is with Final Cut Pro. I took MP4, H.264, 4K video right off my Lumix G7 here, put it into Final Cut Pro on both of these machines and had a great experience. The scrubbing was smooth, playback was smooth, you can cut and add video transitions in there, everything works great. Where it does start slowing down is when you have a gigantic timeline, you're manipulating the clips a lot or layering things on like a bunch of uh, text and stuff like that, titles, that's when it's gonna start slowing down. So if you're just doing basic edits in 4K or if you edit more 1080p, then these machines are gonna be fine for you. But if you're doing uh, more complicated timelines at 4K, these are not gonna cut it. They're gonna start bogging down and be really unusable. So the actual editing of the video and messing with the timeline and all that stuff is one part of video editing. Now the next part is the exporting or the rendering of that video out to a file. To test that, I used the Bruce X benchmark and ran it on both of these machines. The Hackintosh completed that benchmark in 1 minute 33 seconds, while the 2014 Mac Mini took 2 minutes 2 seconds. That's about a 30 seconds difference, and honestly, I'm not all that surprised with that much more powerful processor in the Hackintosh. So for my final thoughts, I broke this section up into two different areas. One, I'm going to talk about the results of the benchmarking. The second, I'm going to give my thoughts on Hackintoshing in general. So the results are pretty much exactly as I was expecting. The Hackintosh has a more powerful CPU, so we got better scores there. The 2014 Mac Mini has a more powerful integrated GPU, so we got more you know, better scores there. That's exactly what I was expecting. For day-to-day -day use, these machines are identical. You're not going to notice a difference in that for video editing, while you're editing on the timeline, same thing, there's very little difference. They both started slowing down about the same point as you started layering things on. Uh, the exporting, the rendering, obviously is a little bit faster on the Hackintosh with that better processor. But other than that, that experience was pretty much the same. Neither of these are good for gaming. As far as upgradability, you're gonna have a better path with a Hackintosh. You can change the memory, the CPU, the hard drive, and put in a GPU. Now the upgrade options on the Mac mini are pretty much you can add an external GPU and that's about it. And the model I got, I got the one with the SSD, you know, kind of soldered to the board. So I can't swap that out or anything. The most I can do is an external GPU. So upgradability is gonna be much better on a Hackintosh. So with all those updates you can do to a Hackintosh, it sounds like the perfect solution. So why would you get a real Mac, right? Now, this is my opinion, and this is just my opinion. You probably have a different opinion, and that's great. Let's talk about it down in the comment section. But for me, if you need a reliable computer, it's your primary machine, you want support and the full optimization, or you're using this in a production environment, get a real Mac. Do not use a Hackintosh in this scenario. If you're just like a hobbyist that wants to see if you can do it, or you want to learn Mac OS, then you might want to go that route just to kind of experience but Apple could release a patch at any time that breaks it or an update to the operating system that completely prevents it from being installed on non-Apple hardware. And then you're completely out of luck. It's an unsupported configuration. So the only help you're gonna get is online, which is a great community, but your resources are limited there. And I would not rely on a Hackintosh as my primary production machine. So hopefully you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. And come see me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Love meeting new people on there and chatting with them. And I will see you in the next video.